Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the all new 67 inch laser EXP receiver ready from Extreme Flight. If you follow the channel, you know how much I love the 60 inch laser EXP airframe from Extreme Flight. I've been waiting for them to come out with a 67 inch version for quite some time. It finally released and we're gonna take a first look. The wingspan is 67 inches. The length is also 67 inches. It's got a wing area of 850 square inches. It's got a 76 millimeter spinner, which comes included in the kit, and it weighs eight pounds all up. This airplane is powered by the T-Motor AM670, which is an awesome power plant. I've flown these on plenty of 67 inch airplanes and just love them. And the motor is spun by an AM116A ESC. That is a great combo. They just work really well together. That ESC is tuned to work with the motor and you can really feel it when you're flying. Extreme Flight recommends a six cell 4,000 to 5,000 milliamp hour battery. I do fine with either. I'm gonna try a 4,000, but I've also flown these 67s with a 5,000. So it really kind of comes down to personal choice and where you want your CG to be, but it'll work well with both. And to convert all that awesome motor energy into momentum, we've got the awesome 18 by eight T-Motor carbon fiber prop up front. Those are also excellent. They're just high-end props, really well done. Extreme Flight includes Theta 989 mini Metal Gear digital servos. You can also use Savox SV1261MGs or MKS HV747s, your choice. But on the receiver ready version, you get the Theta 989s. You'll also need four one and a quarter inch servo extension arms if you buy the ARF version. And of course, on the RXR version, those arms are already included. That's it for the specifications. Let's take a look at the hardware. And we'll start with the hardware bag. Even though it looks like there's a little bit of hardware in there, believe me when I tell you, the only thing we're really after in there is the tail wheel. That's just about it. Next up, we'll take a look at the horizontal stabilizer. And I'll show you first that they, from a packing standpoint, they use this high density foam and they use that to protect the surface from the arms and the control rods which are already installed. You can see the servo extension arm is already installed. And of course, with Extreme Flight, they use ball link connectors and these G6 horns on the back. So all ready to go. All you have to do is take the packing material off, slide the horizontal stabilizer into the airframe, glue it in, and connect your linkage and you're ready to go fly. As far as build quality goes, very typical extreme flight. Notice that the gap is covered with shrink covering. So there's no air gap in there. It's completely covered and you've got pin hinges already installed. Very nicely done. And the same thing on this side, the covering looks very smooth on the top. I don't see any bubbles or wrinkles or anything that I need to care for. Very clean there. Here's a look at the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer. So you can see just how straight these things are built. Very, very well done. And then there's a look at the bottom. One thing I'll point out about the color schemes on extreme flight planes, they do a great job integrating the colors together, but still providing very contrasty differences between the belly and the top of the airframe. So if you look at the bottom of this horizontal stabilizer, you've got this big section of white with the blue, white, and red stripes. And then when you look at the top, it's very different, but the colors are integrated. So highly complementary color scheme, but a very different look in the air, and that helps with orientation. So as always, Extreme Flight has pretty killer graphic schemes on their planes. Next up is the rudder. We'll take a look at the shrink covering just so you get an idea of how well that's done. We've got our same packing material protecting the shrink covering from the control rod and the servo arm. And then here's a look at the port side of the elevator to get a look at the shrink covering there. And then one of the really cool features about these 67s that I like a lot is you've got this little wire that slides right there. It slides out. You put the rudder on the plane, you slide the wire up through the hinges and the tail wheel holds that wire in place. It's a very nice configuration option if you like to disassemble your planes. Take your linkage off the servo, pull the wire out and the rudder comes right off. In terms of the build quality, trailing edge looks perfect to me. No problems there. And of course the shrink covering, just awesome. Here's a look at the leading edge of the port wing. So perfectly straight. I don't see any problems there. On the wing tip, we've got a couple of thumb screws installed for the side force generators. And what's really cool is they switched away from the plastic version. Now they're using this red knurled knob and there's a plastic washer in there already. 
and a plastic separator to protect your shrink covering. So everything you need to put your side force generators on really quickly, I'll show you those in just a minute, but they're keyed as well, so you don't even have to pull these completely out. And just like on the horizontal stabilizer, you can see the gap is covered with shrink covering and the aileron is already pre-hinged for you. So no work to do there at all. It's just completely assembled and ready to go. You can see the control rod is connected to the servo extension arm. The arm is connected to the servo. All you've got to do is remove the packing material and set your throws to match up with your radio, make sure everything's centered up and you're ready to rock and roll. So literally no work at all to do on the swing. Very nice, very nice. I love it. And for the color scheme, great big field of white, blue stripes, and a red wingtip. Just beautiful. Nice contrasty look when you're out there flying. Awesome. And then just like on the horizontal stabilizer, you've got a really nice complementary color scheme, but it's going to be very contrasty. You'll, you'll be able to tell the difference so easily just from the graphics on this airframe. I only covered the port wing. The starboard wing is in equally good condition, so I'm not gonna bother going through that with you, but I do wanna show you the wing bag that comes with all of the Extreme Flight planes, 60 inch and larger. So it's a nice padded wing bag. It's big enough to fit both your wings, and there's room in there for your side force generators and your wing spar too. So there's the wing spar, and then the side force generators, they get their own little pocket right here. Remember I told you these are keyed, so this little opening slides over the knurled nut, and then you slide the wing force generator aft, and then you screw the knurled nut down, and that locks them in place. Very easy to install and remove at the field. It only takes just a minute. Next up is a landing gear, and you can see we've already got our cuffs installed, our wheel pans installed, and the wheels installed. So all you have to do is screw this entire carriage onto the airframe and you're done. It's literally four bolts right here. The bolts are already in the bottom of the airframe. So you take the bolts out, put the gear in, screw it in, you're finished, already assembled. Again, none of this is hard to do, but man, it's just really nice that they do all the work for you. So you get out of box and in the air fast. So very cool assembly process on these receiver ready planes. Very well done. I saved the fuselage for last because I like to unveil that carbon fiber prop. These are really nice units. You can see they've got the beautiful neoprene covers on the prop to protect the blades and you, but we'll pull that off and you can see there's the carbon fiber 18 by eight by T motor. Very, very nice propellers. These come already balanced from the factory. You don't have to do any work. I have yet to have to balance a T motor carbon fiber prop. They just work right out of the box. You can see the back plate's already installed, the prop nut's installed, and there's a lock nut on there already, and they've got a really nice gap. I'll stand it up so you can get a look, but the gap between the spinner and the cowl is just fine. It's probably an eighth of an inch or less. Just a few millimeters, not much at all. Another super nice feature about receiver-ready planes is they already line up the cowls for you. So if you assemble planes and like to do the modeling, that's something you probably like to tinker with, but getting these lined up, it's an effort. It's an effort to get the graphics to line up perfectly, and to get your cowl opening lined up with your spinner backplate perfectly, it's a little bit of an effort. It can be tedious, I'm not gonna lie, but they do the work for you and I can see everything looks like it's lined up just right on this plane. It looks very good. In terms of the cowl, there's two latches, one on the port side, one on the starboard. You push those forward, we'll pull the cowl off and there is a protective cover on the clear part of the canopy and that's just to keep it from getting scratched. I'll pull that off before we go fly but that is a protective cover right there. And then inside, there's a little bit of a cockpit, so you can see that and how that looks. Nice little graphic detail in there, if you're into scale type details. Inside the fuselage, we've got our XT90 lead going to the ESC for your battery. Velcro is down there on the deck for your battery, and we've got a battery loop right here to hold your battery secure to the airframe. And then in the back, we've got wires for your elevator and rudder, and one right here for your ESC, already where everything needs to go for you to lay your receiver in there. So just beautifully done. And then inside the fuselage, you'll notice that there's a little tube right here. And that tube is what feeds your wires all the way back from your equipment deck, all the way back to the elevator and the rudder back there. And then there's this nice little red X where the canopy meets the front end of the turtle deck. Very cool looking, very nice. And then finally, I've mentioned this before, is one of my favorite features of these planes, and that's the quick release, which is right here. So I'll just slide that quick release up. We pull out and we lift up, and you can see that tab right there pops up. The idea behind that is that you cannot put the cowl on and latch it with that tab up, and that prevents you from flying with your wings unlocked. So you have to put your wing in. There's a little screw that comes in through this hole right here, and then you drop this guillotine down on top, that clamps the wing onto the airframe. 
The safety tab is now flush with the top of the fuselage, so you can put your canopy on and go fly. On the bottom of the fuselage, you can see that this is kind of like a molded opening. That's another really cool feature about these receiver readies. It's not lost on me. Number one, they include the ventilation. Number two, it's not just a rough cut with a Lexan scissor. It's actually, it actually looks molded and the paint is finished and the ESC is right there. So we know between the air intake up front, which by the way has baffles to redirect the air over the motor, and there's an air intake right here on the bottom. So we've got plenty of air intake up front and look at the egress right there for the ESC. We're moving lots of air over the ESC. That's doing things right. This is engineered the right way. This is what we look for. It's what I talk about all the time when it comes to airflow. You have to have big openings to ingress the air. You have to have big openings to egress the air. They're flowing it right over the top of the ESC, which is just awesome. And then in addition to what they've done on the cowl, They've also opened up the shrink covering on the belly to give even more airflow. And they have a styrofoam backstop right there, which will stop air from flowing into the tunnel of the aircraft. It has to egress right here. Well, that wraps up my first look at the Extreme Flight 67 inch Laser EXP Receiver Ready. Obviously, it's not gonna take much time to put it together. I'm hoping to get a chance to fly it on Saturday or Sunday this week. So keep an eye on the channel. We'll get the Maiden video done just as soon as I can. If you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe, smash that thumbs up button, and hit the notification bell so you know new videos hit the channel. YouTube should recommend another video for you right about now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something.